doer of this powerful work. In Jesus' mighty name. We're continuing the teaching on spiritual warfare. Why deal with it when you can deliver it? And in this particular uh, series, we are at the last half of the 12 strongmen. Jesus Christ had 12 disciples, as we read about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then Satan has to mimic everything that Jesus does, so he had to come up with 12 strongmen. And these 12 strong men have hundreds and thousands of little demons underneath them. So when you combat, let me give you an example. When you combat a, an addiction that someone has, you don't come at the spirit of nicotine or come at the spirit of alcohol because they're just a the little guy. You have to go over their boss. And when their boss is kicked out, all of them leave. It's like someone taking over a company. You don't uh, start firing employees until you own the company and you have to get rid of that particular owner first and that owner happens to be the strong man for addictions his name is bondage bondage to any addiction that is in Romans 8 15 but we've already passed that now we're gonna go on to the last six of the 12 strong men and we're gonna begin with the spirit of jealousy the spirit of jealousy is found in Proverbs 638 and in Numbers Five, chapter 5, 11 to the end. Um, in, the, uh, in, in these particular chapters, it explains about people um, being angry and even wanting to kill someone because of jealousy. Envy, envy, envy is a small demon underneath jealousy. And that spirit is full of rage, it's full of anger, it's full of competition, uh, it's full of suspicion, it's full of um, skepticism. All these little demons are falling under the boss man jealousy. So when you see jealousy in somebody, you command, I command that spirit of jealousy away from that person or out of yourself. Oh, look at yourself. I command that spirit of jealousy away in the name of Jesus. You're replaced with the power, the presence, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. I will not allow you in my life. You're not going to keep me out of heaven. In Jesus' name. You see, because all these demons, their whole goal is, is to get attached to you and work their way in. And once they're in, they, you, you will not see heaven until you are delivered. Demons aren't allowed in heaven until you are delivered from those spirits. This is why Jesus demanded his disciples cast out demons. Because he knew they have to be delivered to make it to heaven. We're all born in sin. It wasn't your fault. We were born in sin. And because we were born in sin, we... The older we get, we have to cleanse us of our thoughts and our minds and our sin from generational curses all the way to our own inflicted sin. We have to get rid of it all in Jesus' name, and we get it through the Word of God. It's that simple. Stay in the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God, and all the lights will be turned on in your life to where you need to get rid of this and get rid of that. And we all grow up and get better every day. The Bible calls it going from glory to glory to glory in Jesus' name. So now let's go on to the next one. The next spirit is called lying. And lying is found in Jeremiah 23, 14, 1 Chronicles 18, 22, and also in Ezekiel 12, 24. These people constantly lie. The, the, the Bible says Satan is the father and the master of lies. So if you know one, someone that constantly lies, they have the strong man of lying inside them. You command the spirit of lying to leave that person or to leave yourself. If you have it, I command that spirit of lying. Go oh, in Jesus' name. You're not going to keep me out of heaven. You're replaced with the power, the presence, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. It's that simple. So, let me give you some of the little demons that are underneath um, the strong man of lying. Organized religion. <laughs> Deception. Sodomy and lesbianism. Thinking they can't change. Adultery. Fornication. Uh, profanity. Um, also, uh, physical disease. People think that they're, they'll stay that way forever. Or they were born that way with their mental disease and they can't... The, they just have to deal with it. You don't have to deal with it. Deliver it. Jesus never wanted anyone to be incomplete. There's an example in the Bible of the man that was blind, and his disciples said to him, Master, did his parents sin or did he sin because he's sick? And Jesus said to him, Neither one sinned because it was because 
uh, for for us to heal him right now. He's saying, I'm going to heal him right now. And when he gets healed, all, God will get all the glory and you will know that I am the Son of God. He <laughs> wanted, in other words, he, he allows this to happen so he will get the glory, period. Spirits of lying, negative spirit, condemning spirit, condescending spirit, um, doubting others all the time, unforgiveness, offenses, manipulation. All of those are little demons that fall underneath the spirit of lying. Let's move on to the next one. That's the familiar spirit. Oh, to the next familiar, excuse me, the next strongman called familiar spirit. This familiar spirit is found in 1 Samuel chapter 28. Uh, starts with verse 7, keeps going all the way to the end. It's just amazing how uh, Satan deceives so many good people, making them think that it's okay to go to a psychic. It's okay to go to a tarot card reader. It's okay to read your fortune cookies. It's okay to go to a fortune teller. It's okay to read your horoscope. None of this is of God. People think that witchcraft is big in the African world, when the truth is, is it's just as prevalent in the in the uh, Western world as well too, and in the Northern world, it's not just for Africa. It's just called a different name. It's just polished and called a different name. It's all sin, and it's all under the spirit of familiar spirit. Uh, these are let me let me just give you some of the little demons that are underneath there. The astrologers, the people that their life is guided by how the stars are moving around. No, our life is guided right here. Let me give you an example. Our life is guided right here by the Word of God. We must use the Word of God as our inspired daily bread. He did not say, look to the stars and find out. He never said that. No. Now, that doesn't mean that the stars didn't spell. There's astronomy, and the stars spelled out the birth, the conception, actually. The conception, the birth, the resurrection, even the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And all of us have our own star in the heavens. This is what the Lord talks about. But that's not something that we focus on. That's an addition. This is what we focus on right here. Let the devil twisted it again and took what little, just like Christmas and Easter. Uh, instead of focusing on the authentic reason for the season, he twists it to have people focus on catching Easter eggs and, and Santa Claus gifts. Please. Please, that's not that's a deception and a any any uh, distraction from the devil. Just like the other form of astrology, astronomy is of God. Astrology is from the devil, trying to uh, decide your future per who you're supposed to marry. Oh, please, it leaves the Holy Spirit out of everything. The Holy Spirit needs to be in everything and do it God's way, and it'll work the best. Amen. So, the little demons underneath this familiar spirit are astrology, fortune telling divination, mediums, psychics, occults, tarot cards, horoscopes, palm readers, Ouija boards, Buddha dolls, dream catchers, casinos, uh, and also the casino spirit, if you will. There's a whole story behind that. Uh, crystal balls, manipulation, witchcraft, communicating with the dead, of course, which is mediums. And not only that, um, uh, there are so many other, like, uh, for, for instance, like the Indians and the, uh, not just American Indians, but the other Indians. Both of them have these attachments and these spirits and these objects that they um, rely on and they count on and they, they do their meditation. And the meditation has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It has to do with them. So the Lord wants to straighten us out on that and have us focus on His Authentic reason for all of this, not the devil's counterfeit. You have to have discernment to know. How do you get discernment? Discernment is come by reading the Word of God. You read the Word of God and read the Word of God and read the Word of God and it all makes sense. He will open your eyes to see the truth. And when the truth is known to you, um, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. Let's go on to the next one and it's called the spirit of perversion. Oh my. The spirit of perversion is found in Isaiah 19, 14, Proverbs 14, 2, Proverbs 23 and 24, 23, 24, and Acts 13, 10. This spirit of perversion is not just sexual, but it's mainly focused on twisting the truth, twisting the religion. There's a religion out there. 
that looks a lot like Christianity. And in some cases, it's lumped in the same paragraph, the same sentence as Christianity, and I won't mention their name, but you know exactly who they are. I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm here to alert you and open your eyes. As a matter of fact, they even wear the little caps a lot like the Jewish people do. I wonder why. They even believe Jesus is the risen Son of God. But do they pray to him or do they pray to a human being? Be careful not to be deceived and trapped with the counterfeit. Remember, a counterfeit is not going to be like the Islams because they completely believe the opposite way. A counterfeit looks so much like it. It's so close to it that it's hard to know the difference unless you have the light on it. Who's the light? Jesus Christ is the light. Exposes the truth. You never pray to a human being. Never pray to a human being. You pray to Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit. Period. Human beings, no matter who they are, had sin. We were all born in sin. And the Lord wants us to pray to the sinless, purified, God Almighty, Son of God. Amen. So, the spirit of perversion, let me just give you some of the demons underneath them, along with sexual immorality, of course, along with lust, of course. But uh, there's two types of perversion. It's the spiritual perversion and the physical perversion. Remember I said there's natural and supernatural, flesh and spirit. We have to be balanced and know both. The hand of the lamb, the hand of the lion, and all of the, everything has two parts. Okay, so these are some of the smaller demons underneath that strong man. And that strong man of perversion is atheism, lust, always making decisions, and they're full of mistakes. Strong weaknesses of sexual pornography, idolatry, selfishness, fornication, adultery, twisting the Bible to fit your situation. Oh my. Agnosticism, sodomy and lesbianism, addictions to the flesh, child molesters masochists, sadists, all these people, transvestites, everything. These are not from God. When a person is confused about who they should be, the Bible says confusion is of the devil. Uh, my goodness, confusion is of the devil. So why do we need to be confused if we should be a man or a female? If God made us a man, if we were birthed a man, we need to be a man. We need to, we need to have relations with the woman, the wife that God has put into our life. Not multiple and surely not men. If we were created a woman, we need to remain a woman and have relations to the husband, the husband that God has put into our life. Amen. In Jesus' name. So those are the spirit of perversion. Now, let's move on to, I have several more. I have my whole list here for you and I don't want to miss any of them for you. Uh, we did cover most of these let me go on to antichrist the antichrist spirit should be the last spirit that we're speaking of and you'll see this again in these messages the antichrist spirit is so prominent especially now in the 21st century especially now that the antichrist has literally shown himself on cameras throughout the world has met with leaders walking through walls and uh, and uh, portraying himself as this as this ghost called Maitreya, kind of like Messiah, but betrayal. So Maitreya, the mix of the two words, Maitreya, um, and uh, he blesses people with the number six. He blesses them, and they fall under a trance. Um, and he meets with leaders and basically threatens them. And then he also blesses them if they do things his way, they will win. They will do on go and so on and so. Uh, nonetheless, let me let me go off on this for uh, rabbit trail just for a minute and come back. Why would a true believer that's on their way to heaven vote for anyone that believes in abortion or that believes in homosexuality? It doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter what class, if you will, whether Democrat or Republican, black or white. God looks at the heart, and we as Christians must look at the heart too. And if the person you're voting for stands up for abortion, stands up for liberal sodomy and lesbianism, they're on their way to hell. That means you're going with them. They're on their way to hell, and that means you're going with them. I need 
to speak raw truth to you because the rapture is about to happen and you'll miss it and have to live through seven years of horrible tribulation if you make it through it until you come to your senses read the Word of God and only stick with those people who stick with God don't stick with those people who have one foot in the world and one foot in God are very pharmaceutical but want to fit in with the crowd and be liked and be accepted and so they fit in here but yet they every now and then oh yeah I, I go to church oh yeah um, I read my Bible I think um, last week hmm those people will never see heaven they'll be like the pizza man that's never allowed in the family pool the pizza man that comes to the door that doesn't sleep in the bed <clears throat> that doesn't take a shower doesn't watch movies they just they know of the person they even have the address probably memorized and the people probably have the pizza man's name and 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 uh, routine memorized but that doesn't mean he is welcome into their home we that doesn't mean if we are like the pizza man only frequenting God every now and then part-time relationship that doesn't mean we're welcome in his home heaven we must have a relationship that means a daily hi how are you I love you two-way conversation if we do all the talking and he doesn't get a chance to talk he speaks through his word he speaks through 28 different ways there could be more but I, I did a series on the 28 different ways that God speaks to you because it's so amazing when you open your eyes and you see wow this God is so amazing how can we even begin to consume and realize who he is what does he even bother with us for you almost want to say duh so we need to ask for wisdom James 1 5 every day ask for mercy and grace every day the Antichrist spirit is found in so many different places in the Bible 1 John 1 3 Matthew 6 2 5 and 16 Matthew 5 through 20 Matthew 15 7 and 9 Matthew 23 13 through 29 Luke 11 14 42 through 54 and Luke 12 56 through 59 very amazing the Antichrist spirit loves to overtake good people and twist 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 the truth and it's so close to the Christians it makes Christians even believe that it's okay the Bible says in the last days even the elect will be deceived they would not be deceived if they were into the Word of God stay in the Word of God stay under his protection his umbrella of protection amen I love the Word of God it's my it's my everything I eat sleep and drink this and that ah oh, how can you do anything else when you serve the Lord Jesus Christ um, we have other programs that uh, in other series that we're going to be teaching on but right now I want to remind you you must be delivered get the demons out of your life get them off of your back get them out of your finances get them out of your future get them out of your career you have the power to do this through Jesus Christ you can't do it alone no one can do it alone I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me nothing is impossible with God so grab a hold of the Word of God and embrace it and right now I want you to pray again that you command every foul spirit out of your life and replace it with the power the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God in Jesus name we command put your hand in Jesus name we command every foul spirit out of your life out of your life out in Jesus name the fire the fire the fire of the Holy Spirit be on you remove every situation and every negative out of this person's life be replaced with the power the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God we serve you Lord we don't serve ourselves we worship you Lord we don't worship ourselves we honor you Lord we don't honor money and possessions and things and people we trust you Lord and we trust the God in the people that's it father I thank you for blessing these people and let their lives be changed from this go from glory to glory and notice the freedom and the liberty that they have because they have truly been set free call our ministry 855-426-4908 or there's 949-294-6813 uh, I believe there's another one 949-315-8333 
all of them will bless you. 952-474-8555, that's another line. You can get a hold of us on the prayer line all over this earth. Email us at iamgabrielhope at aol.org. Email us at iamministriesinfo at gmail.com. Email us. Let us know. Call us. Let us know your testimony. Let us pray with you. You need prayer partners. You need people to pray with you. We will pray with you. Send us an email. Call us. We will pray with you. But most importantly, I want to hear your testimony. I want to hear how this worked for you. I want to see the fruit. I want to see how lives are changed. We have so many people that their lives have been changed through the deliverance ministry. And that's the majority of our ministry is deliverance ministry. We, want to, we just want to kick the devil out of your life and watch your blessings flow. Watch your settlement come in. Watch your destiny happen. And watch you just like Joseph and Ruth and Naomi and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And Daniel never have a bad day again in their life. And that people will learn to serve the God that you got. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, my best friend. The Holy Spirit, my comforter, my guide that is here with me every day. Every day and night. We cannot live without the Trinity. They're everything to us. And when we keep our mind on eternity, we realize how important the Word of God is for us to read every day. It is such a pleasure to bless you and I want to hear from you I want to know that it's working and again uh, you're welcome to come to our church if you're close by here in California and all over this earth and all over the world wherever we're holding a meeting please come and let me bless with you but more importantly I want to help deliver you through the fire of the Holy Ghost the blood of Jesus and the Word of God and the name of Jesus no name greater than the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, you shall be delivered. Free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Free to live the way God wants you on earth and free to make it to heaven. In Jesus' name, keep that devil off your back and tell him, I know who I am in Christ. Get out of my life now. And he will go because he'll know you mean business with God. And he knows your faith. He sees your authority. And it works. Hmm. It's amazing when you grab a hold of all the benefits that God has for you. It's awesome. All right, we'll be back. God bless you. Ready to change. Because once you are, your whole way of thinking will change. You can't be half delivered, half one. You can't still do what you got to do, watch pornography or smoke a weed and be delivered. No, when you're free, you're free. You do what Jesus would do, not what you would do. Okay, so now to answer her question, the, 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 uh, the, the young wife came to me and I said, the husband can stay out there. I want to just talk to her and then I'll talk to you because I don't want it to be a counseling session. This is a deliverance session. Get that de devil off her back. So we talked for a little bit. We realized, okay, she's really ready. Ouch, in Jesus' name, you foul spirit, leave this good woman alone. And that demon picked her right up in the air, tiny little thing, and threw her right down on the ground. People would go, oh, and they'd run out of the room. Well, go run out of the room. All it was was a big fly. You just smacked that fly. It didn't hurt her. She got back up. She looked at her brother who was helping us. She looked at her brother and said, what happened to me? Where's my husband? And then she just ran up to me and said, I love my husband. Where is he? I got to tell him how much I love him. We knew instantly that that demon was gone. But that was the way that demon exited. Some people are real calm, and the devil gets off their back. Some people go through crazy. Everybody's different. Doesn't matter. Just do it. Mine was like this. I was reading a book, and I realized, wow, I think I have that spirit on my back because I act like this. Nobody was home, and I got on my bed, and I put my Bible in front of my face, and I cried like a baby. God Almighty. If there's any foul spirits on my back, get them off and keep them off. I never want a demon to block my blessings. And sure enough, thank you, Frank. And sure enough, the devil got, I mean, I don't know where he went because I had my face in the Bible. But all of a sudden, I felt as light as a feather, y'all. I got up. 
And I couldn't wait to just go hug somebody and love on them. You ever met negative people? They're always negative, negative, negative. That's what I was like. A little devil on my back, trying to make, make me always put, no. I used to look down on people if they didn't have a job. I used to look down on people if they were outside 7-Eleven asking for money. Until the Lord said, your, your turn here, Gabrielle. You want to shut up? I look at their heart. God will, God will clean you up. He cleaned me up. Get that devil off your back, Miss Arrogant. And now I can't wait. You can tell the ones that want to have it for drugs or whatever, and you can tell the ones that really just had a hard day and they need a little help. Big difference. So that devil got off my back and I was never the same. And I said, Lord, every day I can walk into temptation, but I'm going to choose to turn the other way. You know how many men have asked to marry me? You know how many, you know how many bribes I've had? About 5,000. And I tell them all, I'll cut it off and shove it down your throat because you're talking from the devil. I don't care. I don't play. I'm not having that demon of fornication blocking my blessings. Mm -mm. If God ever sends you a spouse, you need to do it his way, not your way. Or it'll destroy everything. He knows. Boy, I've had airplanes given to me. I've had million-dollar houses and everything just to get me to marry him. And I said, uh, I'm not interested. I'm interested in helping people get the devil off their back. Now, if you want to join me, that's okay. But if you don't, you need to go the other way. We need to focus on the assignment that God Almighty gave us, not what someone else wants us to do. He has an assignment for you. Stick with that. So these people that you'll see on Monday... You'll see at least three of them. There's hundreds and thousands of videos. I am called by churches, which I cannot mention their name, up in Riverside, Corona, West Covina, Rancho Cucamongo, Santa Ana, all over the place, privately. Come, pray. Where we pray for the pastors, we pray for the elders, we pray for the deacons to get that devil off their back. Because they're being attacked. Because they, 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 they think if they can take a leader down or somebody that sings... If they can take them down, then they get at least part of the church not to worship and not to read their Bible. I don't ever want to hear, I don't need deliverance because you're the one that needs it the most. I need deliverance every day. How do I get it? Father, I cancel every negative word spoken over my life, whether I did it myself. I bury every negative thought and word with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Keep me from evil. Deliver me. Get it off my back. Everything that's in my mind. Out, out, out. You will never block my blessings or my finances. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, correct me. If I am saying something wrong, help me. This is the prayers you need to pray. It's a humble prayer. You don't have to tell everybody you're praying. This is you and God in the bathroom. You and God in your car. You and God in your private place where you sleep. Wherever you can be, you pray. Even if it's in your mind. Set me free, Lord. Get every devil off my back. I'm tired of them blocking my blessings. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. You were born with that there and one demon likes another one and likes another one you notice how birds of a feather flock together the certain kind of people always hang out together this certain kind of people hang out together be careful who you hang with because if they're not reading their bible flush right down the toilet everything you have will be destroyed from an addiction yes That's a great question, but the truth is, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? 
He would still be nice to them and let them go. If they want to keep that demon, let them go. He offers deliverance to them. But our focus is to focus on our assignment and whoever God puts in our path. Not this guy and that guy. Another pastor called me up the other day, and I honestly wanted to throw up by the time the conversation was done. He's saying, yeah, I don't like this about this guy, and I don't like that about that one. I said, I don't care about all that. What is your call? Just do your business, because when you stand before your heavenly father on judgment day, you're not going to be able to point the finger at all these other people. He's going to say, no, I'm talking to you. How many times did you read your Bible? They'll worry. They'll have to answer all those negative people. Believe me, I have plenty of them. <laughs> you know, and they're not thankful. I just let them hate. Let them, keep, let them stay that way. They need deliverance. They need deliverance. But until then, focus on your assignment. Be nice to them. What would Jesus do? And go about your business. Don't worry about them. First one was bondage. All the little demons under bondage. Nicotine, alcohol, overeating, greed, shopping. Those women that love to shop so much. Selfishness, gambling, gossip, drugs, dependency on people instead of God. Bitterness, spiritual blindness, unforgiveness, sickness of any kind. Do you remember what number two was before we close out early? Yes, the spirit of fear, afraid of heights, afraid to stand in front of people, afraid of flying, afraid of closets, afraid of, uh, I don't want to go get a job because I think that they might turn me down, rejection. I don't even want to, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. No! You know how many times it says fear not in the Bible? 365. Fear not, one for every day of the year. Isn't that awesome? Because he knows you have the fly swatter in your hand to go, Whew, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. doesn't mean arrogance, like cocaine arrogance. That means confidence that Jesus in you. How do you get Jesus in you? Yes, that's the answer to everything. That's the answer. Spend five minutes a day reading your Bible and that will go in. Okay, so under the spirit of fear, we have terror, torment, nightmares, worry, humiliation, unforgiveness again, inadequacies, um, inferiority complexes. Number three, do you remember what number three was? Yes! Richard, you're so smart. Deaf and dumb. Deaf and dumb is every illness from the neck up. Anyone that says they have multiple personalities, they hear voices, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, every neurological disease, even Luke Garrick's disease, that affects you in the brain, the neck up, that is under the big demon called deaf and dumb. All these have Bible verses, by the way. We gave them in a previous, um, but I'm just going to give you some. Insanity, epilepsy, seizures, foaming at the mouth, suicide, um, convulsions, lunatics, multiple personalities, and I mentioned the other ones. So every one of these issues on earth, they have a demon, and now you know who they are. You tell them, I'm not done. Excuse me, I'm not going to have you block my blessings. Get out. And you keep it up and keep it up until it happens. Okay, we'll quickly go to the next one was infirmity. That's every disease from the neck down from cold to cancer. Okay? And then we go on to... Is that the one that we gave next? Thank you. The spirit of heaviness. That's grief, despair, rejection, self-pity, gluttony, negative attitude, discouragement, suicide, unforgiveness, again, resentment, all those little demons underneath. <laughs> the spirit of heaviness. Somebody who's constantly negative has the spirit of heaviness. Okay? How do you get it off? You do it. Or you can have somebody help you. Okay? If you don't think you have the power, at least you want it to be done. We schedule public deliverances and private deliverances. Doesn't matter. We'll help you get that devil off your back. A couple of times ago, there was a pastor that came here, sat right over there, and I told him, I won't even say anything you're here. We went over to that room right over there and cast the demon out with him and his mother together. Done. Completely different mindset now. That simple. 20 minutes later, their whole lives change. You get that devil off your back. Okay, that was fear. But listen, Dr. Hope is not the one, the only person on earth that can do this. No, 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 no. You have the power too. You have the power too. 
It's, 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 like, it's like having a rubber hammer right now in your, in your hand and you're trying to hit this great big nail out of the way. You need to change hammers. Pick up that big old sledgehammer and whap that thing. How do you change hammers? You get into the Word of God and you realize the authority that's in you. You get the right tool, faith, and you tell that devil, I'm done with you. Tired of you making me this way. Okay. So now we go on to, we have the three that we covered last time. Familiar spirit. It's one of the most common ones on this earth right now. Gossip, 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 gossip. It causes strife. It destroys things. If, if you ever know somebody that has no control over their tongue or their money, forget it. The devil's got a hold of them. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're a president of a company. If they have no control over their money and their tongue, the devil's got a hold of them. Because gossip will kill a big mouth. They always say loose lips sink ships. No way. It'll destroy and kill everything. Okay? Underneath familiar spirit is gossip, and it's also all the witchcraft spirits that he was talking about. That is the demon of astrology, divination, psychics, tarot cards, horoscopes, Palm reading, a Ouija boards, Buddha dolls, dream catchers, casinos. There is, you'll never see a cross inside a casino. You'll never see a Holy Spirit sign. You'll never see a pastor inside a casino. Because it's run by the devil. Because they want your money and that's it. They'll just, they'll throw somebody in money every now and then and that same person will come back, oh, I won, I won a hundred bucks last time. Maybe this time I can win five. So they throw the money right back into the machine. It's a deception, a constant deception, not from God at all. Amen? All right. And then the last two that we discussed, and since the film did not go, we'll just cover these, the perversion spirit and the whoredom spirit. Perversion and whoredom are under sexual demons okay the sexual demons um perversion is also twisting a religion some someone can take a bible verse and take it out of context and when they just pull it out they use it for them instead of putting the verse before it and the verse after it and they can justify what they're doing let, let me just say this carefully there are a couple of pastors out there major names that are condemning the Torah messianic message, saying that there is no law. There's only grace. There's only grace. There's only grace. No, there's both. The hand of the lamb is grace. The hand of the lion is the law. If we're too hard, we're no good. And if we're too soft, we're milk toast. The devil laughs at us. But when you have both, you're balanced. Jesus never said, I came to destroy the law. He said, I came to fulfill it. So we must embrace the Ten Commandments. That's part of the law. And then we must embrace Matthew chapter 5, which is the Beatitudes. So that is a way of perversion. That's twisting the Bible to make a lot of money on television. That's twisting the Bible to make their religion or ministry feel like there's the best one out there. That's twisting the Bible when the Bible says don't take it out of context. Don't change neither dot nor tittle. And what that means is don't add or subtract from the Bible. Keep it the way it was and then read it in the Hebrew. The Hebrew means so much more than the English version. The Bible says, let's give you an example and then we close. If you do not hate mother or father or brother or sister then you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Now, someone would say that doesn't know their Bible, why would God say we have to hate our mother and our father? That makes no sense. The Bible contradicts itself. That's someone who's still in kindergarten. And it doesn't contradict itself because the word hate in America means hate. But the word hate in Hebrew where the Bible was written simply means to like less than. So he's saying, put God first, and then your mother, and then your father. And then he says, love everybody. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor isn't somebody that you live next door to. Your neighbor is the per everyone you meet that stands next to you. Be kind to them because you never know if they're an angel from the Lord. The Bible says, be unaware. You, you may not be aware that I sent you an angel from the Lord. And you always want to be nice to them. <laughs> 
Okay, and then the spirit of whoredom is the prostitution, the fornications, and all those little sick demons that show up in people's dreams at night, feed them food, they have sex with them, and they want to marry them, all kinds of stuff, and they say, oh, no, that only happens in Africa. No, it doesn't. It happens all over the world, and they are demons from the, actually, the planet of Saturn. You listen to these uh, deliverance videos that we're about to show you. Oh, my goodness. It'll open up your eyes to say, perhaps I may have one of those and I need to be free. Maybe that's why the finances are, are, are troublesome. Maybe that's why all these negative problems you have in your life, there is a devil standing in the path. And it's your job to know who he is and get him out. And then the windows of heaven open up over your life. Amen? Okay, so in closing, we have three more that we'll study next time. And Lord willing, we'll be able to get the video working where the audio is and you can actually see a deliverance. And then I want to do a deliverance with everybody in this room. I want you to schedule a private deliverance if you want me one-on-one -on -one with you. I will get my staff here. And if the demon starts talking of you, I'll have it filmed so you can see what the demon said when you're done. Okay? Doesn't have to be aired. Doesn't have to be on YouTube. That's your private business. If you want it, we can use it as a testimony like the, these all did to help other people. There's a whole movie out called Refuge from the Storm of a true story of a pastor's wife that got delivered from the demon. She kept praying for all these people, and she wasn't reading her Bible enough. She was so busy taking care of everything, she wasn't reading her Bible enough, and all the demons came on her. So the movie is a true story about her being delivered. And I'll air that sometime when Pastor will let me. It's amazing to know what, how much better your life can be as soon as you realize, get that devil off my back. And you can do it right here by staying in the Word and staying in the Word and staying in the Word and staying in the Word every day. It's amazing how much favor you'll have everywhere you go. Okay? So I want everybody to stand on their knees. We're going to, or excuse me, get stand to their knees. I'm used to saying, get on your knees. <laughs> let's pray. Get on our knees and pray. So let's stand to your feet, please. And let's, I want you to, to speak to the devil as you're commanding him, like Jesus would command him, okay? So you don't talk nice to him because he'll laugh at you. So I want you to speak firm. First of all, is everyone in here saved? Does anyone need to know Jesus Christ? Everyone in here saved? Everyone say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again the third day. Holy Spirit, get everything out of my life that should not be there. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Help me make it to heaven and my loved ones too. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to pray the devil off your back. Say, I command you, Satan. Come on, y'all. I command you, Satan. And you filthy demons. Every foul spirit. I command you. Out of my life. Out of my finances. Out of my health. Out of my future. Out of everything to do with me. I command you out. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, I command the fire of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, and the whole armor of God to be on me. I'm protected. I'm covered. You can't touch me. Your life is going to get better and better and better and better. Amen? Does anyone have a particular song you want to sing? Hmm? What's your favorite worship? Anyone have a favorite worship? We can sing. You and getting angry too much and you're trying to tell them, don't, don't, don't. Please, it's not good for you. And they say, be quiet. I'm not going to listen to you. When you've lived what I lived, then you can tell me what to do. I know I used to say, uh, have you ever met people like that? I call them stubbornly stupid. Okay. But the Bible says, Proverbs. And I like the book. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I love the book of Proverbs because it teaches about wisdom and instruction. 
from the whole, it's, if you get a chance to read the whole book, read it at your convenience. Okay, tonight, I was, when I was on my break, um, I read Proverbs chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'll give you guys a minute to get set up. Everybody there? Not yet. Okay, Proverbs chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Yep. Okay, everybody ready? Okay. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Whoever loves instruction uh, loves wisdom, but he, 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 but, uh, but he who hates correction is stupid. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsel of the wicked are deceitful. Read that one more time, please. Okay. <clears throat> Whoever loves instruction loves wisdom. But he who hates correction is stupid. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsel of the wicked are deceitful. 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 What, thank you, Alan. What he's trying to say is, is at lunch today, at his break on his work, instead of hanging out, instead of doing other things that wouldn't be approved by God, he grabbed his little Bible. You read it last weekend. Who, who all of you take your Bible to work with you? Amen. Who carries your Bible with you all the time? You should. That's good. Good, but when you read it, it's there. It's there with you. Sometimes, oh, I have it in my head. Well, if you have it in your head, you need to have it in your heart. A lot of people can be saved in their head, but it's in the heart that matters to God. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at our heart. If we have all of these other things in our heart, let's just say if we watch the Internet a lot during the day, that is in our heart. If we have a spouse or family, personal problems, public problems, that is in our heart. If we have the love of money or the love of this and the love of this and that, all of those are in our heart. Maybe we have hate, maybe we have jealousy, maybe we have a little bit of pride. What we need to do is say, Lord, get everything out of my heart. Everything that comes before you. There's nothing wrong with having family and loved ones in your heart. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Why am I telling you all this? Because I want your life to be better and better and better. Jesus Christ is the only answer. This beautiful place that Pastor Wiley has sacrificed his life for because he loves you people so much. He said, how are they supposed to go to work with dirty clothes and a dirty... He said, come on. I need to provide them a roof over their head, a good night's sleep, a shower, food, so you can get out there and find the work. Amen? Thank you, sir. So because he loves you so much, do your best to say thank you to Jesus by reading your Bible every day. Because it's the word of God in his heart that has caused him to love you so much. Amen? Can y'all give Pastor Wiley a clap, please? Okay, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. Bottom line, it's casting the problem out of your life. And I, as I said before, we were all born in sin. Sin means Satan. Satan has demons, and those demons have a boss that they have to answer to. I'm just doing a real quick refresher course because we have some new people in the class. This is a deliverance class 101, if you will, and our goal is to get every demon off your back. People are finally realizing that a good message doesn't do you any good when you forget it a half an hour later. It doesn't do you any good when your life stays the same week. After a week, after a week. There's a reason for that. We have to take that good message, take it from our head, remember it, put it in our heart, go home and read it. And when we read it again, we do it. And when you start doing what the pastors are asking and telling and preaching, that's when the little devil on your back starts saying, man, you're, you're making me feel uncomfortable. 
I don't like it when you read your Bible on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. You're only supposed to let the pastor read it on Sunday. You're only supposed to sp spend a couple of minutes with God. The demons hate it when you take time out to worship the Lord, whether it's in prayer or whether it's opening your Bible. I do have my glasses with me this time. Who was with me last time? <laughs> I had so many pair. I didn't know what to do. I thought, okay, Lord, I'm going to bring at least three this time so I don't lose them. Okay. If we can all turn to Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Tell me when you're there. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. And remember what Alan was saying. Proverbs chapter 12 says, if you listen tonight, you're wise. But if you cho choose to dismiss it and say, oh, that lady's crazy. The word of God tells the truth. The word of God is not for us to say, ah. Because if we say, ah, to God, guess where your blessings go? Mm. My job is to get that demon that's blocking your blessings out of the way. Enough is enough is enough. It's not your fault. We all were born with him on our back, and it's our job to get him off our back and focus on our future. Amen? Who has Matthew chapter 12, verse 29, and who would like to read it? Well, how can one in a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Amen. Who's a strong man? Can anybody tell me from the last class who a strong man is? Keep going. Who else? Okay. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Jesus Christ is speaking. And I'll, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. Jesus Christ had how many disciples? Satan has to counterfeit and copy everything that Jesus does, right? So guess how many strong men he has? Twelve. Jesus has twelve disciples. He was the thirteenth. So the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were always seeing this group of 13 walking around. Jesus had them all around him teaching his disciples. Well, the devil's like, hmm, I need that too. He cannot create, but he can manipulate. And he'll take what's there. Let me give you an example. Marijuana. I hate marijuana. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Hate it for all you viewers watching all over the world. It was never meant to smoke. It was never meant to make you feel high. That is God's, that is, excuse me, the devil's way of taking something that God created to ruin people's minds, drain them of their energy, their God-given energy and drive. This drug makes them feel, ah, oh, so everyone thinks it's okay. The truth behind marijuana was to cause lotion for your skin to make it so smooth and soft for men and women alike, as well as internal medicine. It works like aspirin. It was never meant to be smoked. It was meant to be injected through the doctors to kill the pain when a patient is having surgery and for the exterior lotion. But the devil has to take everything that God creates and twist it to make people's lives a mess. I don't know if you've seen signs, but I saw signs on the freeway that says, driving high is like driving drunk. Because they feel a little. So this is where we're going, where the devil copies everything that Jesus did. So because Jesus has 12 disciples, Satan has 12 strong men. His bosses are called strong men, and Jesus said it right here. How can... One enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, steal them, unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. 
Every single one of those 12 strong men that Satan copies are written in the Word of God, and we're going to show you the Bible verses. Now, under Peter, Peter went around witnessing, and he has hundreds of Christians underneath him. Probably you and I sitting here could have been from the seed of what Peter witnessed. James, John, Bartholomew, all of these disciples have people underneath them that they witnessed and brought to Jesus Christ. Someone brought you to Jesus Christ, and you have probably brought others to Jesus Christ. Who in here has had the privilege of witnessing to someone else? One, two, three, four, five, six, wow, seven. I know he has. Hitchhiker went all across the world doing it or all across the United States, I should say. It's a blessing when you can say to someone who is, you can see him sitting on the bus or sitting, sitting anywhere or standing somewhere in the grocery store, and you can say, oh, you look a little down. Can I pray for you today? And when they receive, when they receive some form of prayer, you can say to them, you know, I can't do anything, but I know Jesus working through me can help you make it to heaven. And can help me help you get your problems off your back. Because God does not induce problems, the devil does. But when the devil realizes after tonight that you know who he is, and you take your authority, and you say, get off my back, Satan. I'm tired of you blocking my blessings. Okay. Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29 that we are to conquer the strong man, and then the little demons underneath each strong man will come out. Have you ever prayed for somebody? I know some pastors have. You prayed for someone to quit smoking, and they feel really good. They go home, and they quit smoking, and, they, and about three weeks later, they're looking for butts somewhere, starting in the corner, and <laughs> getting, picking it back up again. What happened is, the strong man... His name, bondage. Does anybody remember where they are found? The piece of paper that you have and the pen that you are given. If you can please write down, 12 strong men. Okay, 12 strong men. Number one. The first one is bondage. B-O-N-D-A-G-E. Can anyone speak uh, Spanish in here? Who can? I can't see who that is. Could you please come up here, sir? No, I want you to interpret to this guy very quietly what I'm saying. Just, just, just to him. Just sit right here if you can and tell him to write down. Thank you, sir. Tell him to write down strong, 12 strong men. Because this man is helping me out a lot, and I know the Lord's going to bless him soon, Okay. But if he doesn't understand what I'm saying, I want everybody to understand. And very soon we're going to have the sign people in here to help the deaf as well, too. Okay, so everyone have 12 strong men written down? 12? Yes. Okay. 12 strong men. Number one, bondage. That is found in, can you all turn to Romans chapter 8? Verse 15, yes. I'm glad you remembered. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Who would like to read Romans chapter 8, verse 15? It's okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Romans. Back of the book. Back of the book. It's a New Testament. Yes, sir. Please. 
Uh, 8.15, Romans 3, or excuse me, 8.15. Can you read that one more time a little bit louder? And I want anybody who has a question about that verse to ask when he gets done reading. Amen. Please do. What's your question? Amen. Okay. Abba. Abba. In, in Hebrew... When you say, okay, you have a mother and you have a father. What do fathers normally do? They provide for their children. You need something? Here, 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 here. Not all dads do. No one's perfect. We're not here to cut down dads. But a father provides for their children. A mother provides for her children. They have their job to take care of their children. So we too turn to our heavenly father and say, Abba! Abba means you take care of me. And I consider you my daddy. So Ab Abba literally means daddy. Abba. Abba, like the group Abba from years ago spelled the same way. But it means daddy. Now when a little child that you have, daddy, daddy. That means we cry out to our father, daddy. And he said, oh, I love it when you consider me your daddy. Amen? That means we have now adopted him as our father. He's not God at a distance. He's not, bless thou this holy, mm, oh, please. That puts God way in the back of the room. He is now our daddy. He's close to you. And in your mind, you close your eyes and you hug him like a father. This is what a real relationship with your heavenly father is. And he'll know it. Amen? And then he says, once you realize that I will take care of you, you no longer fear. And that's number two. I want you to go behind, make a little space between number one and number two. And now you're going to put the spirit of fear Yes, please. Spirit of fear. Uh, number two. And I want someone to turn to 2 Timothy. First write down spirit of fear in number two. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. These are the demons that are blocking your blessing. Now, now let, let me just explain something. Why this is so important, please. If someone robs the grocery store down the street, if they rob, the police always want to know who did it so they can go get them and lock them up, right? So they don't do it again, right? Jesus said in his template prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. So he's saying it's the same way in the spirit realm, in the heavens. We want to know who that demon is on your back that's blocking your blessings so we can arrest them in the spirit and get them out, lock them up so they stop blocking your blessings. And if you don't want them blocked up, then stay miserable for the rest of your life. It's up to you. It's not up to the pastor. It's not up to anybody else. It's up to you. You have that Bible. You read that Bible. And you command in Jesus' name. You take your authority as a Christian. I'm a Christian. I don't have to put up with this. Devil, you get off my back. I'm tired of you blocking my finances. I'm tired of you pitting my family against me. I'm tired of rejection. Get off my back, you filthy, rotten devil. Greater is he, Jesus Christ, that lives in me than he that lives in the world. I win. That's your righteous authority. And the devil goes, whoa, I think she knows what she's talking about. Whoa, I can't bother him tomorrow. Let's see if next, let's see if Saturday he, okay. Then the devil creeps around, comes out, and he tries to whisper something in your ear, make you think bad thoughts, 
Whisper something in your ear, make you get angry. Oh, good. He's not really believing what he's reading. And that's, at that time is when you grab your Bible and you go, Oh, no, Satan. I'm not going to let these thoughts and this feeling block my blessing. Get out of here. He starts with your mind, goes to your mouth, goes to your heart, and you live it. But the Lord works the same way. He starts with your mind, reading the Word of God. Then you speak the word of God. Then you love the word of God and you do the word of God. That's what gets the devil off your back. There is not a single person on this earth that hasn't gone through dips. My job is to help you get up and go. I've lived what you've lived or I wouldn't stand here and talk to you. Nothing is impossible with our father. My Abba, my daddy. He supplies all of our needs. Number two is fear. Who wants to read 2 Timothy verse one, choose, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 7? Who has it? You do have it? Okay. Hang on just a second. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor... No. 2, two Timothy? 2 Timothy. Verse 7, thank you. 2 Timothy 1, 7. <laughs> 2 Timothy, y'all are going to get so blessed by this. If you do what this man said in the very beginning, are you going to listen to Dr. Hope or are you going to blow it off and forget about it? If you blow it off and forget about it, the Bible says you're stupid. Nobody likes to be called stupid. If you're wise, you're going to say, man, I need to get this stuff off my back. I need my life to change. I need my life to get better. And the word of God is the only thing that's going to change my life. This man said in, in Proverbs, on his break at work. Come on, he could have been getting on his phone looking at pornography. He could have been getting on his phone looking at some video. Yeah. He could have been talking and smoking and doing all the stuff that everybody else does. But instead, he went to the word of God. And he showed him, he said, I love Proverbs. Proverbs is written by the wisest, wealthiest man that ever lived on this earth. I think I'd like to read Proverbs too. Because you get to be like the people you hang around. You read Proverbs, all of a sudden you get favor and blessing and money comes to you. I'm telling you, it works. Keep it up. Don't take a break. If you break, you take a break from God and you worship the devil. That's how important it is to depend on God every day. We stick with God and we remain faithful. 2 Timothy verse one, chapter 1, verse 7 says what? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God... Don't you love the way he reads? Thank you. Ooh, he has a great voice. He, it, the Lord has built microphones into his chest. <laughs> For God has not given all of you the spirit of what? Fear. Isn't that what Romans 8, 15 just said? But of power. Wait a minute. What Power for what, Dr. Hope? Power to go, get off my back, Satan. Shut up and get out of here. I'm done with you messing with my finances and my future. I'm done with this lifestyle. Give me back everything that the devil stole. And if you don't do that, he'll laugh at you. And he'll say, just stay the way you are. Go ahead. And you know what will happen? He'll give your authority. The Lord will say, okay. You don't want your blessing? We'll give it to somebody who wants it. Why do you think all the bad people get blessed so much? They're stealing it from all of you. Because you haven't taken your authority. I'm here tonight to tell you, you can not only get it back, you can get double good for your trouble. If the devil has ever stolen a family member from you, finances from you, a job from you, a car from you, a house from you, he'll say, excuse me, give that back to me. And God will say, I will not only give you everything back, but I will give you double good for your trouble. So you get two houses, two cars, two children, whatever, whatever you've lost. 
That's how gracious God is when he says, I'm going to give this man the authority to get everything back. And it's your job, like Alan said, to listen tonight and say, man, maybe there is something to this. Okay. 2 Timothy 1.7 said, I do not have the spirit of, okay, but of power. What else? Of love. Like Pastor Wiley loves all of you so much to risk everything he has to make sure that you can get back on your feet. And what else did it say? Of a sound mind. Most people think that just because you go through a dip, you're crazy, you're nuts, you're bipolar, you're schizophrenia. Excuse me. Stop lying. Tell him, get off my back. Yes, sir. I will tell you. Thank you for asking that. Okay. <laughs> I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He asked a big question. How does fear get in there? Some people are born with it. Some people obtain it from friends, from videos. It's not just the spirit of fear. He asked a question that's a, you, you, you asked a question that's here, but the answer is here. How do demons enter a person? We will, you can also let them in, but there are so many ways, and I can teach you that, but that's not what you need to learn tonight. We'll teach that next Saturday night, or excuse me, next uh, Thursday night, just for a little bit. Because it isn't going to take you long to catch on how demons get in. My goal is to get them out. Okay? I'm going to teach you how to kick them out and lock that door. Okay? Whether you were born with it, passed through video, music, friends you hang out with, eating the wrong food without praying over it first, hundreds of ways demons get in. I'll give you all the reasons. That's what Jesus always prayed over his food, even this food. That guy prays over it. He prays over it every time. You need to pray over it too. You need to pray over it. Lord, I thank you for this food. I apply the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. All you have to say is verbally the blood of Jesus over this food. Help it bless and nourish my body and give me strength. Thank you, Father, for this food. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. That's simple. So many people eat. And they have no idea that the person that gave them that food, this doesn't happen here at all, but they have no idea that the person that gave them that food prayed a cursed prayer over it and gave it to them. Oh, I know you like chocolate cake so much here. Some of you have had people feed you in dreams. And it was the enemy catching you when you're vulnerable. That's why you wake up and you're to pray as soon as you wake up. Father, everything I dreamed, everything that entered my spirit or my body, when I was asleep or when I'm awake, I purify myself with the blood of Jesus. And if you don't, you carry those demons around with you day after day after day. There's hundreds of ways they enter. I will get into that later. Right now, 2 Timothy 1.7. Let me, let me just give you a small story about this. Uh, not that you have to hear my testimony. That'll be later on. I'm worried about getting you all back on your feet. I'm concerned. I'm not worried. I'm concerned that I want to make sure every one of you only come back here. After a while, you come back here for church. Not because you have to eat here or not because you have to live here. Not that we don't want you, but that you already are out there helping somebody else. We are blessed to be a blessing. Amen? And you'll come back here and don't ever forget to say thank you. When Jesus said, you must get rid of the strong man, I'm giving you the names of the key strong men because when fear leaves... So does inferiority, I can't say that right, inferiority complex. Someone that is, feels like they're worth nothing. That demon will leave. All these little demons underneath. People that are afraid to fly, please. That demon will leave. People that are afraid to be in a closet. Oh, it's claustrophobic. That's just a demon. Get out. Every little demon underneath fear will go when the big boy is gone. Every addiction under bondage, drugs, alcohol, shopping women, that women shop too much and put their poor husbands in the poorhouse because they can't stop shopping. Let's put it, let's be real. And the man's out there working his tail off and the women's over there shopping. That's a, that's a bondage spirit, shopping too much. 
men that want to spend their cars and whatever, whatever idol you have that is before God. Even eating too much. Obesity is under bondage. Something that you too much of, you can't live without. Chocolate or coffee. All of that. Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, all that is the common. They're all under the spirit of bondage. So you tell that spirit of bondage, you leave me and my family alone. You can sit in your car, wherever you choose to be, walking down the road, and you command that spirit to leave you and your family alone. And just because it doesn't happen in one week, are you going to give up? Are you going to give up? I heard three no's. Are you going to give up? So what do you do? Keep on going. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I used to model for Miller beer and Coors beer. I didn't know Jesus Christ. And I had to walk around with this little beer can. I was so sick, I'd pour it out. I ugh, couldn't stand it. One day, this beautiful lady came and told me, if you don't stop what you're doing, you'll be dead in 24 hours. I thought, uh-oh. But she spoke with such authority, I believed her. Most of the time, I'd flip them off, tell them a few colorful words, and tell them where to go. <laughs> but her, I listened to for some reason. So I kind of got scared, and I stopped what I was doing. I stopped work early, you know, and I went back to my, my room, and I turned on the television, and there was this preacher on TV. And that preacher said the same thing. There's a young lady watching me. And if you don't turn your life around tonight, you will be dead in 24 hours. I said, oh, my God. Excuse me. I was smoking my cigarette. Oh, and it dropped to the ash dropped on the linoleum floor. And I had my little whiskey over here. And I, oh, God can see in my bathroom. I was so arrogant, so prideful, it wasn't even funny. But I listened. Oh, my gosh. What if this is for me? What if that lady was right. What if this guy on TV is right? It's why I like to be on television today, because that saved my life. So I put my cigarette down, and I actually said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. And I said the sinner's prayer. And I made a commitment that day that I would read my Bible. But I told God, you don't know what my schedule is. I don't have time for this. And that's when he said to me, and I'm going to say to all of you around the world, unashamedly, you have toilet time. Especially you rich folks that get up every day wondering how you're going to keep your money, how you're going to keep it rolling, how, what's going to happen, who's, who's doing what. You always have private time in the bathroom. Take your Bible with you just like this gentleman did right here. And said, Lord, I need my time with you. And you'll be surprised how the demon gets off your back and how the Holy Spirit comes in. So it was following that day. Y'all are going to laugh at this maybe. But I used to stutter really bad. I was so scared to stand up in front of people. I would sit down like this. So I started holding Bible studies at my house. I used the steps. I started holding Bible studies at my house. And I would sit down and I would say, would, would, would somebody like to read? Um, would somebody like to read? Uh. And they'd always say, sure. They always got up and read. But I held it at my house. So I, I would have to tell who to do what. And finally, a lady walked up to me some day and said, one day, and she said, don't you know about 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 7? I said, where, where, where? So I went to 2 Timothy 1, 7. She said, you say it every day, Gabrielle. Watch your life change. And if you don't believe me, you stay the shy little uh, 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 stuttering woman you are. She was tough. And then she said to me, how dare you hold Bible studies in your house if you don't even know how to speak? I said, well, I, 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 heard, I heard Mo, Mo, Moses co co couldn't speak e either. She said, yeah, and he had someone else do his job for him. Who's doing yours? Oh, I had to remember Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. This lady's trying to correct me for my own good. Not to hurt my feelings. But to help me, that's what I'm doing for you tonight. Get them demons off your back. Admit I need change. 
Enough is enough, you filthy, rotten devil. I'm not putting up with your curses anymore. I'm tired of you blocking my blessings. So I listened to this lady, even though I didn't like her breath. She smelled like she just had a hot taco. Horrible. I didn't like her breath, and I didn't like her attitude, but she made sense. I said, okay, 2 Timothy 1.7. So this is what I would do, and I remember telling you all this last time. I said, okay, Lord, is it almost time to go? I don't want to go over. I almost, I'll, I'll keep you just a few more minutes. I said, okay, I'll take 2 Timothy 1.7. There's, there, there's, there's 24 hours in a day, so I'll say it 24 times right now. So I would get up in the morning, and I'd go in, and, the, and I'd read my Bible. I don't know how this is supposed to happen, but I'm going to start reading my Bible. So I would set my little clock, okay, for five minutes, and I'd force myself to keep reading for those five minutes. And then I would force myself to pray for five minutes. And then I would force myself to say 2 Timothy 1.7, I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. And you know, ladies, within two months... I never stuttered, stuttered again. Within two months, I stood up in front of people and I, was, I couldn't believe I had such no fear. I thought, well, I don't care. Put a thousand people here. I want to tell them what Jesus has done for me. Because what happened is, is when I spoke to Timothy 1.7, that demon of fear got off my back. And now I saw things differently. I'd, I wasn't afraid to stand in front of people. I could speak clearly. I could stand up at the Bible studies and they said, what happened to you? I said, that lady helped me back there. That lady. Everybody knew she was one with a bad breath. And they said, oh boy, you got close to her. Yeah, but God will use anybody to help you. Now let me go to the very last one for today. After you go for 2 Timothy 1.7, that was, that was the second one. I want to hit on the sound mind. Have you ever been accused of being bipolar, schizophrenia, crazy? I used to tell people if they said they saw an angel, saw a demon, had a vision of heaven or a vision of hell, that they were mentally ill and that they needed to take their pill. And God said, stop it, Gabrielle. I'm tired of you making fun of my power. I send people to heaven all the time in their dreams and their visions. I give them a taste of hell to let them see where they're going if they don't change their ways. I bring angels and demons on the scene to let them see, and I will open their eyes. So don't tell me, Gabrielle, that things like that don't happen. Who, we are, who are we to tell God? That doesn't happen. Oh, he'll prove you wrong. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. If you do not have a sound mind, very interesting. There are people that are born with spirits that were passed down from four generations. It has nothing to do with you. Can't help it. That little demon might grow with you and get worse and worse as time goes, and it's your job to recognize him, get him out, and replace him with the Holy Spirit. This is found in Matthew. Excuse me, I should give you the name of it first. It's called the strong man spirit of deaf and dumb. The strong man spirit of deaf and dumb. Number three. This is number three, the th third strong man. There's 12 of them, so I'm just giving you a little bit at a time. The second one is the spirit of fear, hon. The one we've been talking about. First one was bondage. Second one was fear. Third one is deaf and dumb. Like deaf and dumb. Now in the natural, it sounds like somebody that can't talk. Oh, that's not me. Oh, I can hear. That's not me. That's exactly what the devil wants you to think. But we're not talking in the natural. We're talking the little devil on your back. That's called the supernatural, the spiritual. So you need to deal with the spiritual because God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to deal with the supernatural realm. The, the deaf and dumb means I'm deaf and dumb to common sense. I'm deaf and dumb to wisdom. I'm deaf and dumb to discernment. Everything that is invisible. So people that have multiple personalities, deaf and dumb spirit. 
Multiple sclerosis, deaf and dumb spirit. Anything neurological from the neck up, any disease from the neck up is under the deaf and dumb spirit. Epilepsy from the neck up, bipolar, schizophrenia, all of it from the neck up. It's just a demon that has bothered these good people. Command that thing out. And if it takes two months, who cares? Get it out. If it takes six months, keep it up until that thing is gone. You understand? What's the easiest way to do it, Dr. Hope? Well, let me tell you something. There are no crash courses. There are no skipping a class in the university of God. You can't speed something up that you have to walk through. But what you can do to make it easier is to pick up this Bible every day, just like this guy did. And you read it and read it and read it. Those will cause those demons to walk outside this church door and stay there. Can somebody tell me what Matthew chapter 17 did I, did I give it to you? Matthew chapter 17. I apologize. 15 through 21. Hitchhiker, if you're in the mood, <laughs> he reads so well. Matthew chapter 17. 17. 15, excuse me, yes, 15 through 21. Yes, sir. I'm so proud of you all for listening. Matthew 17. 15 through 21. If you can, please. Matthew 17, 15 through 21. Lord, have mercy on my son. He is an epileptic and suffers severely. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, Father, and perverse generation, mm. how long shall I be with you? How long shall I hear with, with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus was telling, thank you. Jesus was telling this person that came there, brought their son that had epileptic spirits, throwing himself around. Neurological problems. He called it a deaf and dumb spirit. If you can go to Mark chapter 9. Write this. This is the same one. Mark chapter 9. 17 through 29 please. Chapter 9. 17 through 29. Are you ready? Okay. Go ahead. Mark chapter 9, verse 17 through 29. I'm going to have him read it. He's almost there. Everybody else there?
Amen. All things are possible. He's saying that if you know anyone that has a mental illness or a neurological problem from the neck up, that strong man, the boss, under all those little demons, that strong man is called deaf and dumb. So you now know who they are. Just like the police want to know who robbed that store so they can arrest them, lock them up, so they never do it again. You want to arrest those demons, lock them up so they quit bothering you and your loved ones ever again. Last one I want to have you write down quickly is now the illnesses from the neck down. If you have aches and pains in your body, if you have anything from a heart attack to a stroke to diabetes, anything from the neck down that's under the spirit of infirmity. It's found in Luke chapter 13. I-N-F-I-R-M-I-T-Y. In, firm, itty. In, firm, itty. And the spirit of infirmity is found in Luke chapter 13, 11 through 13. That's every disease from the neck down. Cancer from cold to cancer and everything in between. Luke chapter 13, 11 through 13. <laughs> and then remember, all these strong men have hundreds of little demons underneath them. And we're going to close now. We can continue reading that, but I want to close with a deliverance prayer for all the ones we study tonight. Remember, there's 12 of them. And some of these little demons have several bosses to answer to. And that's why it takes so long to get them out. And by the time we cover all 12, you'll know who they are. But right now, it's our job to get the demon off your back for the knowledge that you know and replace it with the Holy Spirit. I want everyone, first of all, is there anyone that needs to accept Jesus Christ into their heart? Everyone saved? Amen. We'll still pray. We're going to pray the prayer of salvation, and then I want you to repeat after me. We're going to command these spirits out of your life. Would you all stand, please? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Give me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again. Holy Spirit, if there is anything in my life that shouldn't be there, get it out and add what should. Heavenly Father, I command with the power that you've given me. Now here's where you want to get firm, y'all. With the power that you've given me. Get every demon off my back. Get every demon out of my finances. I rebuke the spirit of poverty. I rebuke the spirit of deaf and dumb. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of bondage. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I belong to Jesus Christ. I command you out of my life. I command you out of my life. One more time, I command you out of my life. I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to you. You cannot block my blessings anymore. I will not stop praying until I see my victory. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like to close real quick with saying there are some of you that have a job in here. And you know us pastors, we don't live off of anything but what the people are faithful to give. Some of you can't afford to give anything. But if you can afford to give a dime, I'm going to tell you why. Because it blesses you. A dime can't pay our phone bills. A penny can't pay our phone bills. A nickel can't pay our phone bills. But God supplies. Why would you give? Why would you give? Because God expects you to give back to him. 
You don't have to tell me what it is. I don't, it's not between, it's between you and God, but you can come up here and put it. This is the only thing I have tonight to put it in. Hello, Mr. Cameraman. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> but you can put it in here. Walk up here and put it in here, and we will bless everyone that puts anything in there. Let, let me just, let me tell you one cute little story before I leave. I, I, I was starting out, uh, starting out with a little baby publishing company. I wanted to publish Christian books for pastors that couldn't afford it. And so I was trying to type, and, and I was spending all my resources. I was working for the post office, working all my resources, trying to make sure these pastors didn't have to pay a dime. And, and one day, uh, uh, two college kids came to my door, and I said, uh, I, I, so what happened with your... Anyway, the two college kids came to the door, and they wanted me to give, and I said, I, I don't have anything to give. I said, as a matter of fact, I've cut out of my... I don't do my nails. I, don't do, I, just, don't, I just cut all the fat out of my... I, because I, my financial diet, because I want to be able to help these pastors. And they said, well, um, we, we, we need help. You know, if you could at least buy a candy bar. And I said, a candy bar looks better in the box than it does on me. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I said, I, I, I'm going to have to pass. But there's a storm coming. And I said, that storm, I wasn't living in California at the time. I said, that storm. And I told him about the rapture. I said, it could rain at any minute. Jesus could come back at any minute. And so I had these two ladies invite Jesus Christ into their heart. And I said, that's all I have to give you is the word of God. And I said, hold on, I think I have a Bible. I ran in the house. This is right after I quit studying when I pulled my Bible studies. And I brought them two Bibles. And I said, thank you. And then I told the ladies, if you ever get a chance to go to church. And I was not a preacher at that time. I didn't have a church. And I said, if you ever get a chance to go to church, always do the three T's. Your time with God, even if it's on the toilet. Your talent. You have a talent to talk? Talk about Jesus. You have a talent to do something? Use it for Jesus. And always pay your tithe. Your tithe is your 10%. I said, because that'll bless you. Okay, here's what happened. I went back inside, and the doorbell rang again. And I looked out, and I thought, oh, there's the two girls. What part of no don't they understand? I walked back out there again, and just what they didn't know was about an hour before that, I went to write my tithe check. And the Lord told me, double your tithe. I said, double my tithe? You want me to write a bounce check? So I had wrote the check. And I put it in the envelope, ready to walk out to the mailbox when the doorbell rang for the second time. And here was those same two college girls. And here I had a bounce check ready to go in the mailbox. And they said, um, you're the first person that's ever talked so boldly about Jesus to us, so we want to help you. What are you doing? And I said, well, I'm trying to work for pastors, you know, that can't afford to publish books, and the books can go where they can't, so let's spread the books. And they said, well, God, they didn't even know him as Lord or Abba. They said, God talked to us, precious girls. God talked to us, and, they, and, and we want to give you a cash advance check from their visas. Just don't cash it right away, just three days. So they each handed me a check for $400 a piece. So all because I was obedient, I didn't have any money to give. I'd already given it all the pastors. And when I had a, well, let me just explain something. I, my, my $8 in my book turned to 800 within an hour time because I obeyed the Lord. So when you give to God, if, if you give him $1, he'll give you 1000 if you give him $10, he'll give you 10000 You stay in his word, you can never outgive God. So when we pastors say give, we know that if we don't tell you to give, we're held responsible. Second of all, we know that we're blocking your blessing if you don't. So every time you come into this church, I don't know if this is the actual offering plate for it, and I don't know, but it doesn't matter. We'll drop it in there anyway. But you don't need me to tell you. The Holy Spirit... You. And if you don't have income coming in, you, uh, uh, that's what we're here is to help you for. But if you do have income coming in and you want your job to increase and you want favor on your job and you want a better j paying job, I'm telling you, Gabrielle Hope can't do it. But Jesus can. You make a deal with him, you bless him, he'll bless you. We pastors aren't all out for the money. I've heard so many curses and rebukes on us pastors. And here we're sacrificing everything we have to make sure we make your life better. I'm tired of the devil's lies. Lies. We're here to help you. You have to help yourself. Pick up that word of God. Pick up your word of God. 
every day, every day, every day. Father, I'm spending my time with you. I'm going to do my talent. If I have a talent to speak, I will speak about you. And any money I make, I don't care. You can give to 20 different ministries, 30 different ministries. You can divide it up. It doesn't matter. If you belong to her church, give it to the church. And if you belong to this church, give it to the church because the pastor needs to keep paying the light bill so you have a place to eat and sleep. Amen? But if you don't have work, don't worry. We're here to help you. It's a two-way street. Amen? And lastly, I want to say, any business person would say 50-50, 70-30, 40-60. But God says, God, God, hoo-hoo, your Abba, your daddy, says 90-10. You all keep 90. Just give me 10%. And when you give me 10% and you're faithful, I'm going to bless your 10% as if you don't, never missed it, and I will pour blessings upon you. That's what happened to me. I started giving and giving and giving, and it came in. I said, oh, this is better than I ever expected. And then you get excited about offering because you... See, and I knew the power of speaking the word of God. That's power. Everything else is negative, but that equals power. So I threw his little body over my shoulder and said, You will live and not die. He says, Call those things that be not as though they are. Sometimes you just have to be told two to three times. But let me tell you, when you write down your vision tonight, <laughs> Write it down as if it's already happened. Thank you, Daddy. It's not going to. It's already done. He said it's finished. He didn't say to me, take what the devil has given you and turn it into good. Give us this day our day. Dr. Gabriel Hope inspired by many, into including Reinhard Bonke, T.L. Osborne, Billy Graham, and His Majesty King Hussein of Jordan, just to name a few. Dr. Hope supports orphanages and caretakers at SOS Villages in Amman, Jordan, and all over the world. But most importantly, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ bursts forth in Gabriel Hope's healing festivals, and miraculous signs and wonders follow. The dead have been raised, and blinded eyes have been opened. Supernatural.
devil intends for bad, God will turn for good. Because I have the fullness of God in me, it doesn't matter what happens to me, I know. Dr. Gabriel Hope is the host of three TV shows on the Royal Steps Network. She is the author of 12 books, co-producer of the upcoming feature film, Royal Steps, and a music artist and songwriter, among others. Yet, if you ask Dr. Hope, why do you exude such grace, joy, and confidence? Her answer is, because I have sat on my heavenly daddy's lap. And if you ask her, who is your heavenly father? She will boldly reply, he is. <laughs>